Is that everybody here? Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay. So, uh, so I have the machine door. We're just gonna get started. My name's Han. If you have any questions, uh, uh, your teammates will have my email address and please reach out to me. Uh, my turnaround time is five minutes unless I'm driving or flying. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so I have the machine door open uh, just to show how intuitive the machine is. As you can see, it's telling me to close the door because I have the door open and in similar fashion, if you have a paper jam, it'll tell you exactly where to go. Uh, all the machine parts that are movable by you as the end user will be marked as green or nude or cream colored. Uh, another reason why I have this open is there's an important part down here. This is your waste container. Uh, once this gets 100% full, uh, the machine will stop working. So make sure you have one backup before this gets to 100%. And I'll show you later where to check the percentage uh, on the actual panel. The other part that you'll probably be uh, touching would be this part. This is the toner. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Once it runs out, you're just going to slide the next one in. Just follow the grooves. Uh, what's really great about our toner is made out of recycled plastic, so it's uh, good for the environment. Um, the trays over here to the left of me are your high capacity trays. Uh, and they're going to be your default trays, I guess you'd say, in the senses of they hold the most paper. Um, so once uh, five runs out, it should go to six and, and so on. So you always want to keep these folds for your uh, teammates to not have to refill as often, uh, depending on the job. So, and as I open and close this, the machine will always ask you to reconcile uh, the type, the color, and the size. Uh, right now it just says eight and a half by 11, so we're just going to confirm that because Generally, only 8.5 11 is going to be here, or with 8.5 by 11 with a hole punch in it. Um, all your other trays here will actually hold the bigger paper if you need to. You're always going to load it on the left side and uh, move the guides over to make room. The other important thing is if you are the person loading the paper, uh, once you open it out of the ream, you want to give it a fan. Uh, reason being, once it's packaged from the factory, there's a little bit of moisture trapped in between so the pieces of paper can get stuck together and when it gets pulled into the machine it can cause a paper jam and if you are using any recycled or reused paper make sure there's no bends or frays in it when you're loading it and make sure it's fully aligned and what I mean by that like a deck of cards if the bottom one's a little skew the guide's not going to be hugging it all the way and can also cause a paper jam but if you do have one it will walk you right through it where to get it out at. All right. If you are the person copying or scanning anything from the top we always want to use the long edge in, and then when the guide's touching it, it will light up and lift up the guide. Uh, what we don't want to do in the sense of copying with just basic 8.5 by 11 is not put the short edge in, because the machine's so smart, it'll think it's 8.5 by 14. If you don't have any, it won't print onto it, and then you'll be kind of stuck. So if you are copying 8.5 by 14 or scanning, that's totally fine. But if you're doing 8.5 by 11, make sure you do the short edge, and make sure the guide is always hugging it. The other reason why I'm showing you this is to, if you have a copy or a scan and you have something that doesn't belong on there, like a smudge or a line, well, if you're like me, I use moisturizer, I touch the paper, I use heavy ink or white out, it transfers onto the paper and passes over onto this little slit of glass here. And the way I'll know is that I have something on here, and there's a little secret compartment here to the right top, which has a little microfiber, and it's marked with a little hand and a microfiber. And we want to check this little slit of glass and wipe it down. And if uh, the smudge is there, there's like a little bit on there. The machine's brand new right now, but once over time, like 100,000 passes, you'll see that there'll be a little crud on there. But this will wipe it off. You can use an alcoholic wipe if this gets lost or uh, just anything that's not abrasive. We just don't want to spray heavy liquid in there because it's not waterproof or not sealed in there. Another cool thing about our printers is that all our printers come with a. Uh, uh, ruler on there so if you have a I don't know like a small size card or something you just want to measure for a special job uh, we, you can measure it here and then input the actual custom size into when you change the settings it'll actually have a custom size there so it makes it easier for you to put the x and y parameter in there for your job so let's go ahead and close this up all right so let's bring this to the right of the machine right here is your inserter so if you're doing, uh, say like reports or syllabuses, 
And we're gonna do the same fashion of, of putting the long edge in and making sure the guide is hugging. And this one's labeled T1, so if you need to select it, it's a, the drawer is always labeled T1. All our drawers are labeled like one, two, three, four, five, six, but this would be the only one that would have a T in front of it. So you know it's for the inserter. Other reason why I'm over here is because I want to open this up. And like I was saying earlier, all the movable parts by the end user are marked nude or green. Um, right now we won't actually know what we need to use until the machine tells us. So if we have a paper jam, it might ask, tell us to turn this and then open this to actually get the paper out. Uh, whenever you're removing any paper jams, you just want to make sure that you take it out carefully. Because if you tear a little piece off and it goes back in the machine, they'll have to take apart the whole thing because the thing's very sensitive. They'll think there's a whole piece of paper inside. Other important thing here is uh, the staple waste container and your stapler. Uh, to unlock your staple waste container, there'll be like little metal bits in here, but once it gets full, it'll stop the stapler just like your waste container. And once this gets full, It'll, you can just throw it away and I'll actually show you where to check for the actual percentage when it gets full. And always make sure that when you put this back to lock it or else it won't let you close the door. Uh, this you're going to grab with your index finger and thumb. You can just pull it out. The only piece you're going to replace is this actual clear part once all the stapler, staples are expelled. Uh, you cannot buy the staples at Staples or Home Depot or wherever or try to put your own in there. They're only exclusive to Xerox, so just pay that in mind. All right, so we locked that back in. If nobody's here that actually saw what I did, you can always reference to any of these guides that are right adjacent to any of these parts, as well as removing uh, uh, paper jams also. So, all right, oh, one other thing. So this will be for your hole punch. Uh, there's actually a little sensor in here. And I'll show you later where that is, where it'll tell you if it's full or not. Right. Okay, so if you want to come over here. Okay, if you could badge in for me real quick. Okay, as you can see that uh, your teammate has badged in. We're going to go to copy. And on the left here is where you're going to enlarge or shrink anything. So you can actually tap on this uh, box here and actually input the numbers here with the panel. So you don't have to keep pressing up or down. The other thing is uh, paper supply here. Cool thing is I actually tell you how much paper is actually in there. So if we go to more, anything marked red would be totally empty. And then this will tell you it's at 100% and like so. All right. And the next would be duplexing, so it's set to one-sided uh, to help you guys save money. Uh, totally up to you if you guys want to change it to two to one or whatever corresponding to your job. So I really think copy output should be labeled finishing because it is finishing, but it's labeled copy output and you'll see why. When I press copy output, it shows the staples. If you look really closer, there's actually the orientation of the staples as well as the uh, hole punches. So it makes it a little bit easier for you to see where it's at. Um, you can always scroll down for other options. Uh, another thing would be uh, would be the output. And this is where you're gonna find uh, to offset your, um, your copies. So if you do like large amount of copies, you wanna be offset kind of staggered. You're gonna have to select right middle tray and then you're gonna go to offset stacking. And you can do it per set or per job or every page. And as you can see this diagram here, it'll actually stack them separately so it's easier to just pick them out. Um, some of these things are labeled a, a little bit different than I would like, but this is where you're gonna find it. So, All right, so there's a couple other options here, but I'm gonna go straight to output format because I feel like annotations is a useful thing. If you have like a temp working with you or something, maybe they forgot to put the dates or the times or, <laughs> or the page numbers on the reports. It'll actually let you go to, once you turn it on, it'll actually give you, let you put it anywhere on the paper, orientated on the top bottom corner, totally up to you. And then once we go back, there's also comments. So if you wanna say, hey, this is a test, it's a record or whatever, it'll actually keep uh, your comment loaded in there as well as let you change the, uh, the font and font size totally up to you. I won't go too much into that because all of them are similar in fashion, just different functions. 
All right, so let's go back out. So I'm going to service home. It's going to take me home, but I want to go to machine status because I wanted to show you the supplies because it's very important. As you can see, it tells you a percentage of your toner as well as the life of the different parts in the machine. The only ones you really need to worry about as an end user it would be toner, the waste cartridge, and the staples really. Um, all other parts have a longer shelf life so you won't really have to worry about those and they're pretty straightforward how to replace them. And if you guys do run into, if you are the person that ends up having to replace it, you can always email me. I will definitely uh, walk you through, it's very straightforward. All right, so let's go back home. We're gonna go to email. Um, I can see somebody's in there, but I'm going to put myself in here real quick. That way I can demonstrate a function for you. Um, I'm pretty sure Chris is going to load everybody in here, and then I'll make it a lot easier. So once I put that, I'm going to press add and then close, and then I'll see who I'm sending it to, which is myself. And the cool thing about this is that, say like I had a 100 page report, that I wanted to send to another teacher. Um, I'm gonna load this in here. It's gonna go up, make sure the guide's hugging. As you notice, I press preview, and I'm press start. And just imagine these are 150 pages. And then when you look on here on, it's showing the first one, but imagine there's 150 pages here. It'll let you actually let you go back in there, select the one that's maybe a blank page or not supposed to be there or it's upside down, I'll let you delete it out, resubmit it, and then resend it. So I'll save you the time of resubmitting the whole 150 pages and then resending it. So I'm just going to delete this because I don't need to send it to myself. Um, there's a, a couple other bells and whistles in here. Um, Can I ask a question? Yep. So if Chris does not add us because last time she didn't, should we all be clicking add me? Uh, yes, so you can add yourself on there. Uh, okay. Totally, once you can just put yourself in there. So if I did that, is it everybody will see it or just me? Uh, everybody will be able to see it. You should be able to see yes. it in the address book, as long as uh, they uh, gave uh, gave rights to you. Okay. So if Chris didn't give rights to everybody to be able to just add yourself, he will need to add add it. Yeah. So. so which one is add me? Yeah. So that'll be oh, add me. Yeah. There I am. Okay. Yeah. So you should do uh, You're already loaded in there. So I think you're one of the few that are in here, but we can check the address book. And uh, yeah, so it would just be you <laughs> for now. So everybody should add their cells if yeah. you want it sooner rather than waiting. Yes, I would agree. And okay. probably save him some time too. <laughs> um, and just like in the copy, uh, there's uh, definitely a couple options in here. I find the most important one is a resolution, which can be found in advanced settings. And why I say that, sometimes teachers send us uh, like, I don't know, homework or reports or whatever, and maybe it's a copy of a copy and it's just not clear enough, we can go here to resolution and change the DPI to make it clearer. So the higher number you go, the clearer it will be. Uh, just pay in mind, it's kind of like when you go on a flight internationally and you only can carry 50 pounds. This will only let you send a certain amount across. So the higher the resolution, uh, the less luggage space you got. So just pay that in mind if it's a big file. Um, but it's always set to 200. So we're gonna go back home. The other um, uh, thing that you're going to... We hope you have been fabulous three-day weekend. We'll see you back on campus the next Monday. Also, staff, we will have our yeah. new copier uh, individual that will be helping us with the new method to utilize the copier here until 2.10. Thank you. Okay, and the next thing you guys will be using, I won't pay too much mind to the other things until they get like the network folder set up and all and such, but a paper cup would be the next one. Pretty much you're going to send a, a print from paper cut and then when you go, once you badge in, it'll know it's you. Then you go to print release and then you'll select your job and release it. And you're going to do similar fashion for scanning also. So once you badge in. Is that the same thing as print secure? Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Similar, secure almost print. exactly mm -hmm. the same. Okay. So if, you, if you're not using paper cut and you're using the print driver, you're just going to put a four digit code that only you know. Okay. And then you're going to go back here, which is the, um, and then you're going to just rele release the print when you go to jobs. Uh, actually, so oh. paper cut is the new secure print. Yes. Got yeah. it. Yep. So there's no jobs there. So let me re re rephrase that. Do don't print use print the jobs, release. but you're just going to be using paper cut. If you guys are curious what these couple other things are, they're just other software to help utilize. But uh, I'm going to definitely let Chris know that you guys don't really need those things because it's just going to uh, 
confuse you more, just mm -hmm. cleaning it up would be a lot better. Um, so that would uh, end my presentation. Uh, um, have you added your key to it? Mm -mm. Let's show how to do that, please. Yes. Okay. So, so if you have never checked in, here's how you log in using your classroom key. So you're gonna touch the badge. You might need to take it out, it might be too Sorry. thick. You're all right. It might be the sheen on there. Oh. Sorry, you're not allowed to use the copy, Amber. <laughs> you want me to try? Let's try somebody. Not that, it's your room key. My room key? You want to try it? Maybe you take it. It might have been demagnetized. Flip it over. Yeah, so you might need to get that reprogrammed. It opens my door. <laughs> there you go. There we go. So now you can see it says this. And then you're going to press yes. You want to associate your card and now uh, so this is your computer username first digit first letter period last name for most of us yeah you don't need the at west side union part so just the yep and then enter enter and then you use your password let me back up so people don't see your password okay we're going to turn away she's turning in her password that she uses on her computer not the old copier password and you have to leave out the usd part because i had one other teacher try to put the whole thing in and it kept mm -hmm. blocking her out and if you do it more than three times they'll lock you out so oh. just have why so how do you get unlocked oh chris <laughs> it's your computer place. password yes yeah? correct yes. so now you can see yes there you go she is now in and it says her name up here so from now on you do not have to enter username or password all you have to do is use your door key and it will log you in yep. and before you leave you always want to make sure that you log out so someone else doesn't use your account <laughs> yep. i have one question before yes. i leave what do we use out? this versus this this because oh, i know that's this is an inserter that's where you feed it if it's so a big thing. So this is if you want to make like an uh, like a syllabus with different segments in it and to separate it. Oh, okay. so if you want, just kind of so like for most of us, we're not going to be using, using that using part. Okay. So you're always yeah. going to use copying or scanning from here or the glass. Okay. This okay. is so only normal. if you want a separator in your report or syllabus. So, yeah. so Stacy, okay. if you will log in one more time, oh, I want to yeah. Yeah, and you then want to up, if you, you do access device. Time. You will see your copy, how many copies you have right there. Okay. And.